21st of December, so that's Wednesday. So we're getting close now. Um, I've got an appointment in town this morning, which is just something that needs doing. But, uh, that's fairly early on. Um, need to pop into the supermarket either on the way there or the way back to pick up a couple of bits that I couldn't get on the delivery that is not coming yesterday, but coming today. But, uh, how I managed to mess up the date on that, I don't know. I had in my head that it was coming on the 20th, but no, I'd, I'd booked it for today. So it's coming when it's supposed to. But, uh, so yes, yeah, so that's happening this morning. So if there's anything interesting, I might take a, bit, a few bits of footage on the way in or back from town. Um, cut out the pattern pieces, the paper bits, for four patterns yesterday, so they're ready to have the fabric pressed and cut out. Um, we'll see if I get to that or not um, today. It's obviously not having the morning to do that sort of thing. You know, and I might not get to it this afternoon, but we'll see. Um, I still need to do some adjustments to the pattern pieces, like the legs of the trousers will need shortening because I'm five foot four and patterns are not drafted for people who are five foot four, even though it's average height. Um, but usefully, most of the patterns, if not all of the ones that I've just put together, they're all independent design, independent pattern companies. So most of them have the height of the person whose block they use to draft the, the pattern on. So that's useful. So there's one that's drafted for somebody who's five foot seven. So I automatically know I'm quite likely to need to take two to three inches out of that one. Um, I think that's one of the top ones, so I will do a measure because proportions won't necessarily um, be the same from one height to the next. Um, but yeah, trousers, I usually need to take an inch or two, if not more, out of the, the legs. I need to check the crotch depth as well and see if I need to make any adjustments there. Um, whereas the tops, I'm going to need to probably shorten some of them, but that's going to need measuring to, to check. Um, the body in particular, I want to make sure that the crotch and the, the body length are right because um, that's a bit more crucial for fit than like t-shirt type tops. Um, and there's some grading that I need to do, major grading across multiple sizes on the body because it's meant to be negative ease. So if it's not got the right measurements for your body shape, then it's, it's not going to fit right. Um, but also with my high waist, um, there's going to be a little bit of compromise made there. Um, and the other top I might need to shorten, but we'll see. I'll do some measuring and hold the tape up against my body and see if I'm happy with where it falls. Uh, same with the little waistcoaty thing. If I have enough fabric to do that, that's good. that might need shortening. But again, I can measure that and check it. Um, the trousers I need to grade between the waist and the hips. To think, if I remember rightly, I'm a larger size on the waist than I am on the hips. So that should be a fairly straightforward grade. Or I could just go with the larger size. If it's, just, if it's smaller on the waist and larger on the hips, then that's probably more important to grade. So I'll check my notes and, rem and remind myself which way around it is. Um, but yeah, the, the body is over like four sizes that I need to grade because I'm a different size for bust waist and hips and it's not necessarily consecutive sizes. I mean, normally I'd only, I'd try to only grade between like two sizes, but, um, and not like skip over one and go for a looser fit in some areas than others. Um, but for some things you need to get it a little bit more accurate and, and a bodysuit is one of those. <laughs> So, so yeah, so that's going to be interesting. I need to work out what size sleeves to do as well on that. Um, probably the smaller size, but um, I'll be measuring my upper arm to check that one. So, so yeah, so that, that needs doing. Um, but I don't know if I'll get to that today. I haven't yet cast on anything with the leftover yarn from the Christmas sweater, which is blocking. So I was looking at it yesterday and I was thinking, well, if it's grown widthwise, it might not have grown lengthwise. It might have actually shrunk up lengthwise. I don't think it has, but it might have done. So where before blocking, it was just hitting the minimum length of where I wanted it to be. 
Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait till it's dried, try it on and see if I need any extra length. If I need extra length, I'll take out the cast off edge and knit a bit more ribbing, um, which is no big deal. But I don't want to start dipping into the leftover yarn until I've worked out if I need to do that or not. Um, like I said, looking at it, I don't think I'm going to need to do that, but it is pinned out at the moment. So um, it may well once I take the pins out. So me measuring it at this point is, is not going to help. Um, I've done some mildly aggressive blocking. Uh, so I've I've blocked the neckline to widen it a little bit and give it more of the shape from the original pattern photo. Because um, that I do want to try and replicate if I can. Um, and the colour work I've been relatively aggressive on. Because um, obviously that had, would was closer to my body than what I had in my head when I cast the sweater on. Um, so see if we can get a bit more ease in that portion. Uh, more space for mince pies. So, so yeah, so we'll see what it's like once it's dry. Uh, won't be before tomorrow, might even be the day after. See how it goes. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see how the, the yarn responds to, to blocking. Because obviously I didn't swatch for this one. I used the, the top portion of the sweater as the swatch, um, which is fine because at that point, it, if I'd have decided to rip back, it wouldn't have been that much of a problem. Um, and maybe I should have done, but yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I don't have the swatch that, that's been blocked to give me that sort of information on, whether, on what it does, how it behaves when it's wet, so whether it grows length, width, width, wise, both. So yeah, so we'll find that out from this sweater um, and that'll give me an idea for next time I buy this yarn because I did, did enjoy working with that yarn. It's a nice round DK. I think it'd be good for cabled projects as well. Um, and yeah, it's commercial yarns, it's fairly affordable. So yeah, let me just tell you what yarn it was actually. I don't know if I've, if I've done that. Um, and we'll open the advent in a minute. Okay, so it's Willow and Lark, and it's the Ramble line. So it's superwash, but it just says wool, so it's, it'll be a, a blend of wools. Um, so yeah, DK yarn, 50 gram skeins. Um, so yeah, really pleased with it. It's nice and round and soft and nice to work with. Seems to have held up nicely to being wet, so yeah, we'll see what it's like once it's finished blocking. And yeah, I'll probably use that yarn again for, for other projects right so um, as i'm short for on time this morning let's get the advent done it's uh, day 21 uh, now i'll drink my coffee and uh, head into town I'll decide what i'm going to do when i get back kind of depends how i feel because uh, i've got the food delivery coming this afternoon as well so I probably won't do anything that takes too much crawling around on the floor or thinking all that sort of thing to, at least after that's arrived Ooh. it's another one of these cashier sock yarns and oh, that's a nice color like a rusty color it's actually not dissimilar to the color of the corduroy that i'm going to be making these trousers out of so yeah so that's that's nice oh thinking about those trousers i've told you which patterns i'm making the sewing patterns they are unlikely to be finished before the end of vlogmas but I've got the Mitchell trousers from Closet Core, which is their new trousers. I've got the Rowan bodysuit and tee from Megan Nielsen. So it's a, a bodysuit pattern, but it's got uh, t-shirt options as well. So you can either put the bottom for the bodysuit or the bottom for the t-shirt on it. They've drafted it so that the top of the bodice and the bottom are separate. So you just sort of mix and match them as you as you want as you're cutting things out. It's got a V-neck, a crew neck and a funnel neck option and it's got three sleeve lengths so a very flexible pattern so that's going to be going into the the basics pattern stash assuming that it's it's fine to, to sew up and it works for me and uh, then i've got a fiber mood pattern called mabel which is a long sleeved jersey top and um, with pleats on the, the tops of the the sleeves um, so yeah, so that's that's the two jersey project. 
and then if I've got enough of the cord left I'm going to do the craft the new craft houses everyday waistcoat which is a loose fitting waistcoat I probably won't do the ties on it um, but it's um, you put wadding in it and you quilt it so I'm not going to quilt through the cord because I think quilting lines on cord are just going to look odd um, but I am going to quilt the, the wadding to the lining fabric which is a, the cotton lawn that I've got on the air at the moment because I washed that the other day um, so assuming I want enough cord it'll be trousers and a waistcoat from that um, they're all Minerva ambassador projects so keep an eye out for those um, but yeah they're not likely to be finished before the end of Vlogmas uh, they might be cut out but they're all likely to be finished I still haven't had the notions arrived that I need for, for the trousers uh, so I need like D-rings or slider I couldn't find slider buckles so I've gone with D-rings for the tabs on the side I need to zip the right length that kind of thing so um, once they arrive through all the mountains of parcels and packages that Royal Mail are dealing with at the minute um, I'll be able to get those sewn up uh, but yeah if I can get the adjustment made to the patterns and the fabric cut out before Christmas that's that's good because then I can get them sewn up in betwixt us but, uh, right so I really must go and finish my coffee and do my dailies and uh, get ready to head into town Okay, so uh, having crawled around the floor yesterday for like the whole afternoon and into the evening, getting all those patterns put together and uh, ready for fabric and then walking to town and back. Oh, I'm not going to be crawling around the floor to do any pattern amendments today. Oh, my legs are feeling that. But, uh, it's all good. It's all good, good for exercise, good for fitness. Whether I'd have been able to do it if I hadn't have had to walk into town back, I don't know. Probably not, because uh, the positions you have to contort yourself in to stick stuff together. One day, I will have a big enough craft room to have a table in to do these things on. Today is not that day. But, uh, right, we'll see how I feel tomorrow about doing that. Um, I don't even feel like standing at the iron to press all the fabric today. So, uh, But I do have a full day tomorrow, so... Uh, not sure what I'll get to today, with the afternoon, but uh, probably not a lot because I think I need to rest my legs. Might do some work on some crochet blankets or something, I don't know. Okay, excuse the uh, shadow behind me. It's, uh, fresh off the blocky mats, we have the finished sweater. So it's a subtle difference between the pre-blocked and the blocked. If I just step this way, I'll put in side-by-side -side comparison for you of the uh, before blocking. So the neckline has loosened up with a bit of a mildly aggressive pinning happening on the neckline. I also mildly aggressively blocked the body. So you see it's not gained width-wise, or at least not to the point where it doesn't then scoop back into my body shape but it has gained a bit of length. So it's, it's gained about the width of my uh, waistband on the jeans. So it now sits over the top of that. Uh, so yeah, so I've locked the side straight down and the, the baseline mildly aggressively. And yeah, I've blocked the neckline wider. The sleeves I didn't pin down at all because they were a good length and they've not grown at all. So that's great. So uh, that's before blocking, here's after blocking. Good morning. It's Thursday the 22nd of December. So uh, yesterday was the shortest day. So looking forward to a few minutes of extra daylight today. Not that I'm noticed, but you know what I mean. Um, I do like that the days get longer. I like the cold. I mean, not like freezing cold, sub-zero, but I like cooler temperatures. I'm not good in the heat. 
Uh, but I do like seeing the daylight. So. The reason I like the cold more than the hot is you can bundle up and wrap up and keep yourself warm when it's cold, to a point. Um, the heat though, it saps your energy. You get to a point very quickly where you can't take any more layers off, um, which is a different point depending on what circumstance you happen to be in at the time. But, uh, and yeah, it's really hard to cool yourself down when it's really hot. But when it's cold, even when it's like really cold, you can put more layers on, you can put the heating on, you can combat cold. Um, I think that it's more easy to combat cold, or easier rather to combat cold than it is to combat heat. Um, and it, it's cozy when it's cold. You know, I'm talking like reasonable temperatures, I'm not talking like arctic temperatures. So, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd rather it be autumn and a mild winter than summer. So, I mean, I like the sunshine in the summer, I like the flowers in the summer, I, I like the days along in the summer, and a lot of the outfits are very cute in the summer. But I don't handle heat very well, at least not the heat we get in the UK. I went to Egypt a few years ago in like February and it was hotter then than our summers normally were at the time. Uh, we were talking a while ago now. Um, but that was fine. It was dry heat. It was quite comfortable. Summers in the UK, hot days in the UK, is muggy heat. It's sticky heat. Uh, there's a dampness in the air all the time. And you, it, it's just uncomfortable. I don't like it. Uh, dry heat's better than, than muggy heat. But, uh, yeah, that's me. My other half prefers the heat. But, uh, each to their own. But, uh, so today, right, let's get the advent done. And then we'll talk about what we're getting up to today. Okay, so here's 22. So are you ready for the unwrapping? You ready for the rustling? Don't say you haven't been warned. Okay, ooh, that's a nice colour. It's like a teal in that Katia Sock Yarn. Get quite a little selection of these Katia Sock Yarns. Some nice heels, toes in the cuffs the stash. Although, hmm, I might have enough to do like a cowl. Hmm. Because I've got a few 25 gram balls now. So we've got the black, we've got the gray, we've got the rust. So that's 100 grams so far. Could definitely do a hat. Maybe a shawl. Like a little, little, little shawl, little shawlette thing or a cow. Mm. Thoughts. I do like teal. It's, it kind of works. It's dual tone. It kind of works for me. But, uh, I think my, I'm best with like the rusty colours and the, the earthy colours and autumny colours, those sorts of things. But a good dual tone. Mm. Not that I've ever had my colours done, but I think I'd do better with the, the warm autumn colours um, than I do with, like, cool colours. So, yeah. So that's nice. I do like that colour. Okay, so that's that. Right, so plans for today. I did manage to get the fabric pressed yesterday. Um, I didn't get any footage because, A, it's ironing. And uh, B, it's Minerva Fabrics mostly. Um, the cotton lining for the, the waistcoat is a cotton lawn that I got from a large online retailer that sells everything under the sun, which is why it was me to pre-cuts, but they had the uh, delivery window that I needed. And it's cotton lawn, so... Um, it matches nicely, the cord, actually. I mean, it's not an exact match. It's, a, it's more orange than the, the cord, but it's, it's fairly close, given that they were from 
different retailers and bought online. Um, so yeah, so that got pressed yesterday. Um, today I need to do modifications to the patterns for those fabrics. Uh, I've brought the ironing board down, so I should be able to do the modifications standing up. Um, most, if not all, of the pattern pieces will fit on the ironing board. At least the ones that need that definitely need adjustments on will fit. Um, so that's good. And you crawl on the floor. Although I had a bath last night and uh, my legs are much better now. <laughs> so, uh, crawling around the floor to to cut out fabric isn't as much of an issue because you don't contort yourself quite as much as when you're sticking paper patterns together. So yeah, so I need to make the amendments to those patterns. I need to cut out the fabric. So if I can get that done today, then I can do some sewing tomorrow and Christmas Eve. If I can manage to get the trousers done by the end of Christmas Eve, which is conceivable, um, then I'll wear them on Christmas Day. And if I don't, I'll wear something else. Uh, the sweater is done. I've seen a footage of that yesterday, so I'll, I'll have either shown you or be about to show you side by side comparison of uh, pre blocked and post blocked. Um, it's not a massive change. Uh, it did grow a bit um, with mildly aggressive blocking. Um, so that's good to know for knitting stuff with that yarn in the future. Um, and with the leftover yarn, now that I know that the sweater is a good length post blocking, I have started knitting some mittens. So these are a skein deer pattern. They are Auslaug. Sorry, Norway. I'm just murdering your language. Yes, I believe it's a Norwegian word. Auslaug. The reason I believe it's a Norwegian word is, well, A, skein deer is Norwegian, and B, um, it's a Selbu style mitten. It's from her Nordic Mitten Club. So this is number one. This is what it got done last night. So I cast on after eight o'clock and managed to get that far. So I'm the thumb is separated. There's a thumb gusset's done there and we've separated for the thumb. Um, so that's only taken a few hours of knitting. It's DK weight pattern, so perfect for leftover yarn from that sweater. She has the main colour being white and the contrast colour being a charcoal. So I've reversed that and had my dark colour as my background colour and my light colour as my main colour. The reason for that being, although both colours she calls for 50 grams, generally speaking, you're less likely to need as much in a contrast colour as you are in a main colour, generally speaking. That may not be the case with all over colour work mittens though. Um, and obviously I'd had to dip into the limestone, the, the light colour, a little bit to finish off the sweater. So I'm playing it safe. But if I do run out of, of that yarn, it'll be probably the thumbs. So that's not too much of an issue. Um, and the yardage on the ramble is a bit longer than the yardage on the yarn that she called for in the pattern. Uh, she does specify a non-superwash yarn, and obviously I am using superwash. But um, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. The colour work may not knit together as uh, on, under its own steam quite as much as with a non-superwash, because the non-superwash yarn is, <laughs> excuse me, is sticky. So it fills in the gaps with colour work bit more easily than Superwash does. But looking at how that sweater is blocked out, I quite like the finish on how that's ha ha gone on the, the colour work, so I'm not concerned about that. The other thing to bear in mind with Superwash yarn is it's more likely to grow than non-Superwash yarn. So when you've got something that needs to fit quite closely, like mittens, uh, that's worth bearing in mind. Although that being said, unless I actually drop them in my coffee or something ridiculous like that, like a muddy puddle, they're unlikely to be getting washed. I am unlikely to block mittens, um, particularly when they fit closely on your hands. They'll, they'll block as you're wearing them, like socks do. Um, and the other thing is, the final thing to think about with whether you're using non-superwash or superwash yarn, non-superwash yarn tends to be warmer than superwash yarn. Um, partly, and this is my theory, this is not as far as I know, proven fact, but this is my theory. Uh, superwash yarn being smoother 
there's more likely to be gaps between the yarn. Not to force yarn, knitting together, like sticking together, sticking to itself, is going to be a little bit more windproof. Um, plus, the surface is, is being different. Non superwash yarn is the yarn that will get itchy for some people, generally speaking. Some people will have sensitivities to, to other fibres. Uh, my other half of it is not merino or blend. If it's not merino or blended with like cotton or acrylic, he can't wear it. He's got quite delicate skin for wool. Um, but non superwash wool is more likely to be scratchy wool. And that scratchiness is what makes it warmer. If your non superwash wool is irritating you, the chances are it's not cold enough for you to be wearing it, assuming that you're not um, sensitive to wool uh, or allergic to wool. Um, there's a good chance that it's, it's just not cold enough for that yarn. Um, because the prickle, the way it reacts with your skin, that's what heats you up. So you'll notice it less when it's actually heating you up and not when you're like, already warm enough. Um, if that's my theory on it. Um, I'm not the only person who said about the prickle and heat that has been said for a few years now. And I think the the gaps between the stitches, there's a little bit of, that's fairly obvious. And when you look at how the yarns interact with each other, superwash yarn will slide against itself and non-superwash yarn will stick together. And if it's sticking together, there's going to be fewer gaps. Um, so yeah, so that's that. So I'll get some more knitting done on those later, that'll be this evening. I may be able to get that first one done today, barring the thumb maybe. Um, I've done knit the cuff and then 20 rows of the, the hand and the or 20, 20 rows of the chart and there's like 40 odd rows in the chart. So I should be able to get the chart done today, uh, do another 20 rows and then you start decreasing. So that should be conceivably done this evening. Uh, whether I get to the thumb or not, another matter but the thumbs themselves don't take that long so if I get the like finger bits of both mittens done and then do the thumbs at the end um just in case I run out of uh, contrast colour yarn as well and then at least I can do the thumbs relatively mind you I'll do one them one at a time so uh, yeah one thumb may end up with a bit more blue on it because I've got a little bit left over from another another skein of that yarn uh, which I don't have for the the limestone um, but yeah, so that needs doing. I need to marzipan the cake. And I've still not wrapped the presents. So that needs doing. But um, as long as that's done before the end of, of Saturday, we're fine. Um, so yeah, so pattern modifications, cutting out fabric, see how far I get with that. Marzipanning the cake, knitting the mitten, possibly wrapping some presents. Um, like I say, there's only so much I can show you of the fabric stuff because it's Minerva fabric from the Minerva Ambassadors program. So I have to post to their website before I post elsewhere. So. Oh, itchy eyes. I'm just trying to keep a sneeze in. So on that note, I will head off and get going with the day, get my dailies done on the Xbox, and uh, then I'll probably multi the cake first get that out of the way uh, before dealing with patterns and uh, fabric and stuff. You know when you have those days where you plan to do all the things but you end up doing all the other things instead? I'm having one of those days. To... So I've not sorted out my patterns and cut my fabric which is fine because if stuff gets done before Christmas it gets done before Christmas and if it doesn't it gets done after Christmas it's not a problem. To not marzipan the cake yet that's more of an issue, but as long as it's done today, that's fine, because I can ice it tomorrow. So I'll probably do that later. But, uh, I have, however, spent a bit of time working out how to use my digital planner that I'm trying this year to use like, in tandem with my bullet journal. So the bullet journal will be like the day-to-day -day stuff. And the digital planner will be a bit more sort of goal-orientated. So working towards specific things this year that I want to achieve. Um, so that'll be on like a quarterly basis. Um, I've not used a digital planner before. So, um, so yes, I'll be a bit more goal focused and I'm going to keep my content planner for this channel in there as well. Um, so that I don't have to 
carry multiple books everywhere because I've got traveller's notebooks which I have which I was using for content planning and I'll probably use for like scripting out stuff and uh, I was using it for a craft log and a writing log and um, so that'll continue to be used for crafting and writing um, I might not use it so much for the content planning but, uh, the thinking is when I'm, con when I'm doing content I'm using my phone my computer my iPad so if I've got it digitally on one of those devices then I can just take that with me um, and the craft log and the writing log I can do from wherever the traveller's notebook ends up living and then the bullet journal will be kept sort of downstairs as per normal from a more sort of day to day this the appointment's happening this day this is your today's to-do list type houseworky type stuff and um, so that's my thinking we'll see how it works so i mean i've achieved stuff today just not the stuff i intended to achieve but it's only like just gone lunch, so there's still time. Okay, it's not perfect, but this may be the smoothest I have ever marzipaned a cake. Got very, very close to getting it all done in a single sheet. Just need to do a little bit of patching on two sides, which is why we've got some unevenness. Generally, pretty pleased. Okay, so when you don't have a cutting table, but you want to modify your patterns and you don't want to crawl on the floor, ironing board is perfect. And I've got it set up with a Christmas movie on as well. So I've got it at its maximum, so it's a good height. And the pattern pieces actually fit on the top that I'm, because most of them are like folded in half to cut on the fold. So um, most of them fit without too much hassle. Uh, yeah, so I've got the Rowan bodysuit I've done the grading on, the everyday waistcoat I think I can probably get away without adjusting anything and I can always trim it down if it's too big when I make it. And uh, just going to check the length of the Mabel and then I've got the Mitchell trousers to check the hip to waist measurements and check the leg lengths. So yeah, we're cracking on. Good morning, it's the 23rd of December, so uh, there's that. I um, forgot to change my calendars again, so I'll do that in a minute. Um, this is the day before Christmas Eve, so what I forgot to do today? Well, the cake is marzipan, so I need to ice it today. That's priority. Um, and I still have not wrapped the presents, um, so I'll do that today as well. But, uh, there's not many of them to do, so that's fine. Uh, I didn't cut out my fabric yesterday, so I may or may not go as far as that today. So like I say, if I get the trousers made before Christmas, I'll wear them Christmas Day. If I don't, I won't. It's, it's fine. And uh, they'll be made before New Year anyway, because um, they're the next up on my list of of things to make. So, uh, so yeah. And in here... I did get finished last night, like totally finished, one mitten. Now, I was thinking that I'd be able to get away with not blocking these. Um, but the trouble with one side mittens is I don't have standard size hand. And if I'd have gone up a needle size, the fabric wouldn't have looked very good um, and they'd be way too loose um, instead. They're just slightly tighter than I'd like. Um, so the, the pattern is still clear on the camera, but in person, this is a bit more pulled out. And on the palm, we get this strange little pulling for the thumb because I've got quite chunky thumbs. Um, but they will go on. They will keep my hands warm if I need to wear them Christmas day to walk over to my dad's and I can block them afterwards. Um, so I need to get the second of these done. Uh, that won't take too long because this was quite quick so I did it in two sessions uh, so I'll definitely get it done before Christmas Day 
I doubt I'll get it all done today unless I don't bother about cutting out fabric and instead focus on knitting this. That's a thought. Anywho, mitten. Uh, it's meant to be quite mild um, this weekend, so I may not need mittens with fingers on. The fingerless ones may do the trick, uh, in which case I can block these and get them ready for after Christmas. But I'll probably want these ones on Christmas Day just because it's nice to have new stuff. And they'll go with my jumper. But, uh, so I'll probably have them on hand for Christmas Day just in case. And then, yeah, block them afterwards um, and let's get them done today. But then I don't think it's going to be cutting it a bit fine to get them blocked and dry in a day. So, yeah, block them after Christmas. Um, because it's just mittens that need doing, I'm not going to put the machine on to, to spin them. Uh, so we have a spin cycle on our washing machine, which is really good when you're blocking mitts because they'll get most of the, the water out and speed up the drying, which is why my jumper is dry already and not needing like a week. Um, to sit on its mats um, but I'm not doing that just for a pair of mittens that would be silly and we've already done our, our washing for the week and uh, we did that a little early again to make sure stuff is dry for for the weekend um, so that I can put the error away and not have it out today not that we're hosting <laughs> to, to, so yeah so that's something else I can get done today actually is uh, clearing up the living room but there's not much to clear up. I've sorted my blocking mats down here. They'll need to go. Um, and the fabric, whether it's cut out or not, will need to be out of here before Sunday. So, when I've got time. Okay, so yeah, so icing the cake, wrapping the presents, knitting a mitten, possibly cutting out fabric. Um, but I can't really show you the cutting out fabric because Minerva Ambassador's project needs to go to them first. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to have my coffee, have my breakfast. Got chocolate chip panettone for breakfast today because Morrison's are doing tear and share panettone in like a Christmas tree shape and it's really tasty. We've had it a few times already this season. Um, so yeah, so I have a breakfast, do my Xbox dailies and uh, get cracking with the day. Um, but let's see what we've got for our advent first before I get on with that. Okay, so here's 20, day 23. We've just got two left, this one and tomorrow's. So, uh, so it's another ball of the Rikurumi. So this was I had Rikurumi right at the beginning of the advent. So this is a DK weight cotton. It's Okatex, there's the the label. And this is the colours. So the last one was purples and lilacs and lavenders. Those are the colours. This is all blues. So two of those to use in something. I have to ponder what to use. Uh, 50 grams of cotton for. This is a pretty cotton, so and it's a lighter weight cotton to what I use for my dishcloths. So I wouldn't be using it for dishcloths. It's designed, Rikurumi is designed for amigurumi. Uh, with that in mind anyway, as far as I know. Um, but the gradients are not what I would expect for amigurumi. But, uh, but I could do amigurumi with it. Because who says the amigurumi has to have skin the colour of actual people's skin? The amigurumi. Hmm. I do have a few amigurumi patterns that I'd like to do, but most of those are the dot pebbles ones, which are quite realistic looking animals. Um, I also want to do the doll, but uh, the animals are actually, you'll have seen the frog around, um, but there's, there's a lot of them. Um, and they are quite realistic looking. So those ones I'd want to do in relatively natural colours. But then I could do outfits for them. These would be good for outfits. Hmm. 
I'd also quite like at some point to knit a pair of socks in cotton. I wonder if I've got enough yardage. What's the yardage for 50 grams of cotton? 115 metres. Possibly enough for some shorties. Hmm. It's a possibility. Maybe a couple of pairs of shorty cotton socks. They wouldn't match. They'd be sisters, not twins, because of the gradient. So I can't start one from one end and one from the other and get the same. And if I start part way through, I can't get the same. So um, possibly not. Possibly a spring summer shawlette. Like a cowl type situation. Because between the two of them, I have 230. To... So that's probably enough for a, for a little mini shawlette. I don't know that one skein would do it. Anywho, that's a question for another day. Rather than uh, filling out the rest of this vlog with me wittering on about what I could maybe possibly make with two 50 gram gradients of cotton, um, let's get cracking. Okay, time to get this uh, bad boy iced. I am taking the easy route this year and using some ready made royal icing. Partly because I've had trouble making it over the past few years, it hasn't set properly. And uh, also because my hand electric whisk is a bit temperamental at the minute. I don't really fancy making raw icing with a hand whisk. And I also have to go on the top. Some white chocolate snowflakes. So um, yeah, let's get to it. So not the most extravagant of cakes, but, uh, sort of got a, snow, a Christmas tree type shape in the snowflakes on top, but not quite. But, uh, the important thing is how it tastes, not how it looks. So yeah, so that's done and I'm going to keep the trays the snowflakes came in in case I want to use them with sugar paste or anything in the future. It's the 24th of December, so happy Christmas Eve. But, uh, I'm probably not going to get to sewing today. I think I'm probably going to have a day of knitting and Christmas movies. Um, presents are wrapped, decorated, Christmas jumpers finished. Um, I have things to wear tomorrow, so I don't need to rush to make a pair of slightly more complex trousers. Um, so I'm going to take my time and do this after Christmas. So I have the cuff of my second mitten knit, so I need to finish that. And I also have a Christmas Eve cast on that I would like to get to, so that I've got a quite straightforward project to take with me to my dad's tomorrow. Um, I doubt I'll get to knitting whilst I'm there, but it's nice to have something. To, so let's do the last day of the advent calendar. So a big square one today. This is a kit, so it's a little bird kit. It's from Reza Farm, Reza Farm Knitting. It says hard on it as well, little bird hard. Okay, so I think these are felting kits. 
and make a snuggly item for yourself or a friend using the finest homegrown Romney wool from Rosa Farm. The reason I'm saying I think this might be a felt ink is I've seen this is a line of, of products that my local yarn store um, stocks. I think I've seen some felting ones there. I think I've seen some knitting ones there. Okay, so proper Cornish Rosa Farm wool is grown by our own Romney sheep, locally spun, hand dyed using traditional plant dyes back at the farm. Spot clean or gently hand wash if necessary. All wool and instructions included. Hook slash needles not included. And it's got a website address there as well, which is rosafarm.co.uk. So I'm just going to see if I can get into this and see if it is felting or if it, or if I've misremembered, which is possible. Um, um, That's a label at the top, sticky label. There we go, let's slide that up. I don't want to break the uh, band going around if I can avoid it, because then I can slide it back on, in theory. Okay, so band is off. So it could be knitting, crochet, it could be felting. It doesn't say on the packaging specifically. Yeah, it's knitting. I was, I was mistaken. Okay, so it's a little bird that you sew up, that you knit up and stuff. And that's mostly pattern, so I don't want to show you that. So I'll leave it folded up and uh, hide my face. So it's a kit for that. So, uh, yeah. The Rosa Farm yarn is produced from a flock of Romney sheep bred and reared at Rosa Farm in Cornwall. Homegrown and locally spun. So there must, there must be a mill nearby because the uh, the yarn certainly looks commercial spun rather than hand spun. Uh, so it's a double knit yarn, soft and warm, pleasure to knit to crochet craft with, and yeah, plant dyed. 100% Romney fibre. So there is stuffing in here as well. Which feels like roving. Yeah. Like top or something. It doesn't feel like your polyester toy stuffing. Okay, so I'll put that back in the box. Close that up. That might be a New Year's Eve project. Because I think that'll be a bit too complicated for... Because uh, I need to check the pattern um, as I go regularly. It'll be a bit more complicated than my planned Christmas Eve cast on, um, which is a hat. Um, so yeah, New Year's Eve might be a better option for that. Because I can just sit and get that done, probably get that done fairly quickly because it's not huge. So, all right, so I'll put that back in my advent box. And uh, let's go and uh, drink my coffee, have my breakfast, get on with the day. <laughs> this advent i hope you've enjoyed it i hope it's given you some form of companionship if you enjoyed spending time in my company i'd love to see you in the next one which will be during the betwixtness week um, i will certainly be doing my roundup of what i've been working on in december um whether or not there's another video that comes out at that point is yet to be determined very much depends on whether i get out to see the deer or not i think but yeah, they'll definitely be my normal end of month video and we'll be back to normal weekly videos 
from there on all the way through 2023. Uh, so yeah, time to start planning what I'm going to be working on next. I still haven't got around to that. But anywho, I uh, hope you have a wonderful time, whatever winter festival you are celebrating. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.